C2 is an ITX case with right angle design elements introduced by Jonesboro in February 2014. It is not so easy to develop a low cost ITX aluminum case with a guarantee of good appearance, workmanship and quality, but we believe C2 has made it. Well, that's at least what they say on the box. Hello and welcome to yesterday's tech. In this video I will talk about what I call maybe the smallest micro ATX PC case. I say maybe because there may be other case that I'm not aware of yet and if you know any please don't hesitate to leave a comment and let me know about it. I just discovered this PC case from Jonesbow and this one in particular is Jonesbow C2, the black version. This case was introduced back in February 2014 and is available in 5 colors, black, silver, white, red and pink. Why I call this the smallest micro ATX PC case is because I didn't see any other case smaller than this one which supports a micro ATX motherboard and a standard ATX power supply. This is only 20 cm width, 27 cm tall and 26 cm length which means a total of 14 liters. There are many PC cases much smaller than this one but they only support ITX motherboards and only SFX power supply so that constrains me to a much smaller number of options about finding or replacing parts. Regarding Jonesbo C2 where it fits a micro ATX it will also fit an ITX and where it fits a standard ATX power supply it will also fit an SFX by using an adapter. So that gives me a lot more options in terms of choosing a motherboard or a power supply. It also has enough room for 3 hard disks and that's more than enough. The only limit is the room for GPU. You can't use a GPU bigger than 220mm in length. There are plenty ITX video cards on the market but not extremely easy to find any model. As for example, at the time I'm making this video, I think there's not any 3080 or 3070 ITX video cards available. But at least you can find a 3060 ITX, so for the moment we are not stuck on past generations of cards. The last thing that makes this PC case better than most others is the three PCI slots. I say this makes a difference because micro ATX cases are much larger and if there are some other ITX cases comparing in size with this one they only have two PCI slots and one more slot can make the difference in many situations. For example I'm using this slot for SATA and this is connected directly to the motherboard. This way I can plug any hard disk or DVD-ROM drive at any time without opening the case or without using any adapter from SATA to USB. You can use that slot for a sound card, a wireless card if the motherboard doesn't have one. And the last but not the least, this gives you a lot of flexibility when you're looking for a motherboard. Just because some motherboards has their PCI Express slot below a PCI slot. And if you only have two PCI on the case, you won't be able to use that motherboard or you can use the motherboard but without adding a video card. In my case, just because I wanted to get the most out of it, I didn't choose a mini ITX motherboard but a hybrid between a mini DTX and a micro ATX. The mini DTX is the same with mini ITX in width but having one more PCI in length. The motherboard I was using is from ASRock and has one more PCI than an ITX but is 5 cm less in width than a micro ATX. And that left me enough space to use the hard disk mounting system from Jonesbow. 
If I would use a micro ATX, then the only option to put a hard disk inside would be to place it on the bottom of the case. I tried to shoot when I put all the parts inside, but the whole process was horrible. First of all, there was not enough room to record around my hands. To be able to put the hard disk bracket inside, I had to cut the clamp from the 24 pin connectors from the power supply. And I had to deal a lot with the SATA and all connectors to make sure they're all good. I also used some converters and extenders because the first PSU I used had a very thick SATA and I wasn't able to close the side of the case. Being everything so cramped, there's not much to show, and for sure, this is not a PC case for displaying the PC parts, but only the case itself. After a couple of days, I replaced the power supply with a different one with thinner cables. And actually, I had to cut a pair of cables with four Molex connectors because I definitely don't need them and they took too much space. A modular power supply would have solved this issue, but as said before, since I wanted to put this to the limits, I wanted to see how much this PC case can handle using parts as average as possible. The front panel, which is actually a side panel in this case, is more than enough, and I somehow like that it's on the left side, so the front is clean. The only small complaint is that position of power button just above the USB 3 port. If I'm not paying attention when I unplug something from that port, I accidentally push the power button and suddenly my PC turns off. Regarding ventilation, I've seen some tweaks on the internet adding a fan here and there. The case itself supports a fan on the bottom of the case and some even modified the case by adding a fan at the top or at the back. Well, it's actually not needed for any other fan. I've studied the case in various situations and because the power supply fan is face to face with the CPU fan, it creates a swirl and the air enters the case from the back side but also gets out on the back side and that's enough even in full load. Adding a fan at the top will require an SFX power supply in order to make room for the fan and that fan will mostly add more dust inside rather than lowering the temperature. Regarding the bottom fan, I've put there a laptop hard disk and there's still enough free space so the GPU fan can pull the air around the hard disk. In various stress tests, the CPU did not exceed 65 and the GPU didn't exceed 75 degrees Celsius. Having these results, it's pretty clear the airflow is very good and there's no need to worry about that. I also want to mention the case is made by aluminium and in full load, if you touch the case, it's actually warm. Not hot, but warmer than a standard PC case. And this definitely helps. Gaming on Jonesbo C2 is just as good as you would expect, since I stressed out the CPU and the GPU and it handles just fine, depending on your PC parts you'll be able to play whatever you want. I gave it a go in Red Dead Online and I barely hear the CPU fan. The GPU fan stays very silent. The side panel USB ports help me to easily charge the controller while I'm playing. The jack output also helps me to easily plug the headphones. Being used with our PC cases, looking at a Jonesbo C2 is just like I'm playing on a console and it's actually a PC. The finishing is really high quality and the case looks nice and clean. It came with all required screws and accessories for damping, cable management and so on. Being so small is also very easy to travel with, so in case you want to move with your PC from your home to your vacation house, grandparents or whatever, all you need there is just a display, a TV or a monitor and you have your PC with you. So, do I recommend this PC case? Well, 
depending what are your needs or what you want. If you're not short on space, you don't care of appearance and you don't need to move it, there's no point in getting Jonesbow C2. It will just require a lot of attention to build it and there's no reward in this situation. If you have a small desk, you live in a small flat, you just want a sleek multimedia PC in your living room or you want a powerful PC for moving with it here and there, then Jonesbow C2 might be the answer. Considering its small size and able to put inside cheap, mostly standard PC parts but as powerful as in other tower PC, I think Jonesbow C2 is top notch. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.